What's up guys? My name is Lieutenant Nathaniel Flint of the Landship Scorpios. And this is the top five airships. So this video isn't going to be a complete end all be all of the top five airships everywhere of all time. I'm uh, primarily focusing on fictional airships today, uh, but let's just jump right into the list and you'll get the hang of it. The Predator from Jim Butcher's The Aeronauts Windless. This airship uh, annoyed me and also I fell in love with it through the course of the book. Uh, this is a typical airship uh, done up like a sailboat, uh, like a sailing vessel. Uh, however, it floats with magic space crystals and has magic power crystals and levitation crystals. You get the idea. This ship is fast and uh, loose. The crew is very scrappy but loyal. Uh, it is a great uh, airship. You spend most of the book with it in various forms of damage. Uh, it is the mix between a uh, you know military craft for the good of you know the kingdom or or whatever uh, and a air pirate ship. So it's it's got everything steampunks love. It uh, eventually gets upgraded to be the fastest and most versatile ship in the skies. And uh, in the end, I, I ended up really liking it. It can give a punch really hard when it needs to. It's decently fast. It's not the exact focus of the book, but obviously it is the focus of the book. This is low on my list only because in the steampunk that I t tend to favor, um, I, the, the whole magic waving your hand over everything and, and it, ooh, it works because um, I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, also, uh, with the review I want to do for the, the, the Aeronauts Windless eventually, anyways, um, a lot of this book is just so stereotypical steampunk it gets shoved down your throat. So it being a sailing vessel that flies through the use of magic crystals and the captain is a disgraced naval person who still keep, you know, it's just this whole thing that it's not my favorite airship. It is very typical though and out of all of the, I would say, stereotypical airships, this is definitely one that deserves to be in the top five, so I still wanted to mention it here. If you would like to make this decision for yourself, uh, please check out Jim Butcher's The Aeronauts Windless and uh, make a decision on the airship yourself. Next we have Clementine. Now I know that a lot of people will be upset that this is lower down on this top five list, but you have to understand out of all the literary airships that there are, Clementine is number four. And that's for good reason. This is a solid airship. Um, it's not the focal point of the books that it appears in, except for the one called Clementine. Uh, first shows up in Sherry Priest's Bone Shaker. It's kind of in the Clockwork Century universe. It is everything you kind of want out of an airship. It's kind of Zeppelin-esque. It is very beautiful, very reliable. It's kind of scrappy, has a very lightweight crew. So a lot of the things on it are automated or easily accessible. So it can have a lighter weight crew. Um, and then it got its own mini book that is all about trying to track it down after it was stolen. Um, it, is a, it is a staple of the Clockwork Century series, and it's really hard to uh, imagine airships without at least mentioning this one. Um, it deserves its spot in the top five, and I feel like there's very few airships um, that are, I guess, better. Like, when you think of steampunk airships, the Clementine embodies almost everything that you get out of that. So it's it's a very stereotypical, very good example of a steampunk airship. Next, I want to talk about Manta Station. Now, uh, some of the steampunks on the channel are going to be a little bit upset that this is more diesel punk, but it's still an amazing airship. This, uh, this ship is very much like the helicarriers of, uh, you know, the Marvel Universe, but where do you think they, they got this idea? This was a very unique idea for the time. It was a giant aircraft carrier 
already in the sky. It's really big in the Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow universe, um, and also it was a big part of the movie that they made. Uh, it's fantastic, very diesel punky. Um, the crew is just great. Um, and it's a very solid design. Uh, it's very recognizable for airship uh, aficionados, I guess. Um, people who really like airships. Uh, it's a solid contender. It, it, it's very versatile. It's got a good crew. It's important to the story, but not the focus of the story. So it just is ripe for more lore. And this style of airship is very common in steampunk lore and in science fiction in general. Um, it deserves its spot on this list. I did kind of tweak it since it's more uh, diesel punky. I didn't put the Marvel uh, helicarriers on this particular list. I instead gave it to Manta Station. If you disagree with me, check out Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow and let me know why it doesn't deserve its spot on this list. Next is my number two, and I'm choosing this as my number two because on a top ten of airships, uh, steampunks have to rule out. It's just, it's just got, got to be that way. And um, if you're talking about the most steampunky of steampunk airships, I have to talk about the Queen Victoria. It is basically the set piece of the Affinity Bridge. Um, the whole reason the book happens is the crash of this airship. Yeah, I know, probably not a good start that it's famous for crashing. But this airship was beautiful, it was big, it was a passenger liner, but everything on this airship was fully automated. It is as steampunk as steampunk gets. The pilots and the crew are all automatons. Um, it is beautiful and ornate. It's got top-of-the-line technologies. Uh, it was a luxury uh, liner. Uh, everything about this screams steampunk. This is the textbook version of any steampunk airship that would be in any steampunk world. Um, it, it, it's, it's, well, any passenger liner that's not like a steampunk pirate. They do a really good job of kind of explaining kind of how it works, I guess, as they're picking through the wreckage. It does end up crashing, but it is the, I guess, the focal point of the book is discovering why such a modern Marvel crashed. Um, I'm not going to give it away, but it's, it's an amazing story. Uh, again, it's the Affinity Bridge, and it was a great uh, novel to read, and this is just a textbook steampunk airship. It is just beaten out by my number one pick in this video, but uh, I really do believe that it deserved, uh, if not, most people probably put it as number one, again, because it's just so staple in steampunk. Um, but I have my reasons for choosing number one. And number one, we get to it, it's Leviathan from Scott Westerfeld's Leviathan series. Now, uh, a lot of people are going to be cringing and like, why did you do this? Uh, Leviathan is an amazing airship, um, but my favorite reason is just all the thought and design that went into this as an airship. The Leviathan is a giant flying whale created by the Darwinists in England to be the flagship of their air force. Uh, everything on it is organic to some degree or another. There's a few gadgets and gizmos, but I mean, everything on it's organic. How it flies, how it creates the, the hydrogen gas that it needs to fly. Its weapon systems use bats and, and uh, other such things. Um, there's a lot of design that went into communications, how engineering works, what it eats, how it eats. Um, everything about this airship was just extremely well designed. It is also the focal point of the first book and kind of the way that we can have the other two books. It is a staple of the Leviathan series by which it is named. Um, it is so iconic, the whole idea of a sky whale, 
um, or living, breathing airship. But when you read the books and, you, and it talks about the workings of the ship, you can tell that Scott Westerfeld did a ton of research into how a Zeppelin and an airship actually work and redesigned basically the entire system to work organically and, and how various uh, animals work together to get certain effects and basically this one animal is turned into a airship by the means of hundreds of life forms working together in unison to make this uh, a better system. Leviathan is basically an ecosystem all to itself, and in steampunk literature or science fiction literature, it is an amazingly unique airship. While having all the same tropes that you love about an airship, and the story being fantastic, it also subverts all those expectations. It is an amazing example of what a fantasy airship can be, and that is why it is my number one. Did you like this video? Do you agree with my choices? And what airships do you believe deserve to be in the top five? Comment down below. Let me know what your top airships are in video games, in literature, in real life, anything. I definitely want to talk about it. Um, and who knows, maybe there'll be another video in the future. If you like this video, please do feel free to subscribe for more s steampunk content similar to this. Like the video and share it so that it has a chance to find its audience. If you want more steampunk content, do check out my channel. I have event videos where I've gone to many steampunk events. And of course there's World Hatsery 101 where we talk about the history of your favorite headgear. And with that, that's all the time I have for today's quick video. Uh, I hope to see you guys later and have a wonderful evening.